hello everyone and welcome back to my channel first of all thank you all for all the support on the previous video the ultimate quick start guide for md82 like i promised i'm back with the series of videos where we'll be diving deep into the systems of this aircraft before we go into the topic i'd request you to please like the video please subscribe to the channel it really helps the channel and me and my motivation to create this high quality content with that out of the way let's get started on the topic all right so i'm going to divide the fuel system on this aircraft into three parts here just like i would say any other aircraft first is the storage which is fuel tanks so we'll be going over the location of the fuel tanks and the capacity second is the fuel handling and distribution so how is the fuel handled and distributed to uh, the engine and to the apu and third is where do you look for the fuel quantity and usage inside the cockpit now for each of these sections i will be getting into the simulator and showing you where stuff is wherever it's relevant so let's start with the fuel tanks first so here is a top view shot of the md82 and this aircraft has basically three fuel tanks one is the left main tank the right main tank and the center tank the location here is just for illustration so don't assume that the location is exactly where I have made these square boxes, but I just wanted to roughly show where the tanks are at. Both the left and right tanks have uh, 4205 kg of capacity and the center tank has 9346 kg of capacity to hold fuel. Now I haven't pulled these numbers from Google, I have pulled them from the load manager. So anything beyond these numbers, the numbers were turning red. So that means the tank cannot hold that much fuel. So these are the numbers directly from the Mad Dog X load manager that you will be getting with the Leonardo's MD82. Now next, let's look at how the fuel is distributed to the engine and to the APU. So for the engine fuel distribution, the engine pulls fuel from the two pumps running on AC power from the left tank, two pumps running on the right tank and two pumps running on from the center tank. And I'll show you where these pump switches are and how to power on these pumps inside the aircraft. You might have seen me do that in the quick start guide video as well, but we'll go ahead and revise that once again. Now, there is another start pump switch in the cockpit, which we will also jump into the cockpit and I'll show you where it is. But that one pump, which runs on DC power, is for supplying fuel to the APU, which is the auxiliary power unit at the back of the airplane. And that pump is installed inside the right tank. So remember that whenever you have the APU on, you will be pulling fuel from the right tank. One more little detail about the fuel pumps. The two fuel pumps for the left and right tanks are connected in parallel while the center tank fuel pumps are connected in series. This makes sure that you run out of the center tank first. Now you'd ask why? If the, if the center tank has a lot of fuel left and the left and right tanks run out of fuel, you will have a lot more force acting on this joint here on the wing. There'll be a lot more wing flex going on, which is not good for the aircraft. And usually all the aircrafts run out of the center fuel tanks first and then they use up the fuel on the wing tank. And that's to keep some weight on the wing so that everything stays balanced and this joint is not being loaded heavily. All right, so we are in the simulator here. Zooming into the overhead panel, we just talked about all the boost pumps that we have for transferring fuel from the tank to the engine and the APU. I'm going to show you where the switches are. So here you have the two left tank fuel pump, left main tank fuel pumps. These two are the center main tank fuel pumps and these two are the right main tank fuel pumps. And the single pump that is DC powered that I was talking about, which is located again in the right main tank, the switch for that pump is right here. So whenever these switches are off, it will basically cut off the power to that boost pump. And when you turn it on, it provides the AC power to all of these pumps and DC power to this start pump. This start pump is used just to start the APU. All right, so now I have the engines turned on here and you will see that on the EOAP, which is the electronic overhead enunciator panel, uh, there is the center fuel tank pressure low light. So these fuel pressure low lights come in when that fuel tank is running out of fuel. So you can see that the center tank only has 25 kg of fuel left and that is why this is showing up. Now this will show up sometimes in flight and that's when you just shut off the uh, center fuel tank pumps and that will extinguish that light for you now the engines can run even without these fuel pumps on so let's say if i turn off the left and right fuel pumps you will see the warnings for the fuel pressures being low on all those pumps but the engine is still going to keep running 
and that's because there is a mechanical pump which runs when the engine is on but to start the engine you have to have those electrical fuel pumps on the last piece of fuel distribution is the cross feed valve which is this lever right here so right now it is in the off position but if for some reason your um, electrical and mechanical pump fails on on let's say one side you can enable this cross feed valve what that will do is connect the left and right fuel tanks so both the engines can run from either of the tanks so in case there is a pump failure on one side that side engine will not run out of fuel you can turn on the cross feed valve and let it feed from the other tank one more important part of the fuel system is the fuel heat so these are the two um, fuel heat switches that you have right below the start pump so whenever you see the fuel temperatures which is displayed right here currently it's 22 and 21 degrees c if you see those fuel temperatures are zero or less than zero that's when you'd be um, that's when it's advised to have the fuel heat on so that there's no ice formation happening on the fuel filters on each of those engines so to avoid that you turn the fuel heat on and that will turn on the fuel heat and stop from any ice to accumulate over the fuel filter so you will see that when you have the fuel heat on, the fuel temperatures have now gone up to really high values. Once you have the fuel heat turned on, you will see the fuel heat on lights here and it will only stay on for a few seconds and then it will turn off. So right now the fuel heat has automatically turned off and the fuel temperature is dropping. So basically it is only turned on for a while to make sure there's no ice uh, forming on the fuel filter, that's all. Next we will be reviewing the fuel quantity gauges here. So you can see that there's a whole fuel quantity panel here. Very easy to understand. The left main tank quantity is displayed here in kgs. The right main tank displayed here in kgs again. And the center fuel is displayed here in kgs. An addition of all three of those is right here, total fuel. Now you'll see the gross weight here. If you hold on to this button and move your mouse wheel, you'll be able to adjust your zero fuel weight. So let's say my zero fuel weight is 5200. Now when I leave that, it is going to view the gross weight, which is 5200, which was my zero fuel weight, plus the total fuel that is on board. Now if you want to quickly check this system, you can hold on to this test button. So that will change all the values to 1500 here, like you see, and the total to 4500. So that added to the 52,000 52, is uh, 56500. So that means this whole thing is working correctly so you can just quickly test it from here and that is one of the tests that you need to perform while doing the cockpit preparations i think so yeah that's about the fuel quantity the next thing is monitoring how much fuel is being used which is the fuel flow so that you can monitor through these readings right here so currently it is used both the engines are using 39 kg per hour so by default it is going to display the fuel flow and when you click on this middle button here it will display the fuel used by each of these engines for a few seconds and it will light up the used uh, text as well see that so our right engine has used 8 kg until now after the engine start and our left engine has used 7 kg you can use this fuel used reset button click on it so that it resets the fuel used now if you click the middle button it will show up as zero so from now on whatever fuel is being used will keep accumulating on that alrighty folks so that concludes the fuel system video if you have anything else to add on the fuel system please make sure that you comment down below so that everyone in our community can gain some knowledge know that i'm not a real world pilot i'm just like you guys or some of you guys i am trying to read all the manuals that i can trying to research on the internet and i'm making these videos for educational purposes only so if you know anything more put it down in the comment section below thank you all again for watching please make sure you like and subscribe it really helps the channel and i will see you on the next video